Hello, my name is Dr. Kimberly Cheatham. Welcome to this video presentation on preterm labor and preterm premature rupture of membranes. The objectives for this presentation are listed here. Clinicians use a lot of medical abbreviations and obstetricians are no exception. You should be familiar with these abbreviations related to preterm labor and delivery. The period of pregnancy identified as preterm is between 20 and 36 and 6 sevenths weeks of gestation. Preterm labor is labor that occurs during this time. The problem with preterm labor leading to preterm birth is the increased occurrence of fetal morbidity and mortality. The earlier a fetus is born before term, the higher the chance for fetal morbidity and mortality. Severe problems are associated with preterm birth before 34 weeks. Between 34 and 36 weeks, risks to the fetus are lower, but morbidity and occasional mortality still occur. In some investigations, fetal morbidity can occur with delivery as late as 37 and 38 weeks of gestation. The most common causes of preterm birth are listed in this table. Notice that preterm birth sometimes occurs iatrogenically. Babies are sometimes delivered early on purpose because of other pregnancy complications such as severe preeclampsia or poor fetal growth. There are numerous risk factors for preterm birth. The most important risk factor is a prior history of preterm birth. Here are more risk factors for preterm birth. Preterm labor is diagnosed when uterine contractions are present that lead to cervical change before 37 weeks of gestation. If a preterm patient presents with a cervical examination of 2 cm dilation and or 80% effacement, this is automatically considered to be preterm labor. A related diagnosis to preterm labor is incompetent cervix. This is characterized by painless dilation of the cervix during the second trimester that leads to fetal loss. If incompetent cervix is diagnosed before 24 weeks, a stitch called a cerclage may be placed into the cervix to attempt closure and prolongation of the pregnancy. Women who present with a history of incompetent cervix in a prior pregnancy may have a cerclage placed prophylactically around 14 weeks of gestation. True preterm labor is difficult to diagnose. Most women who present with contractions before 37 weeks will proceed to a delivery at term and thus did not likely have preterm labor. Once preterm labor is diagnosed, management depends on the gestational age of the fetus. Women diagnosed before 34 weeks should undergo specific therapy in an effort to delay delivery and decrease risk to the fetus if delivery occurs. A tocolytic, which is a medication that helps to decrease uterine contractions, should be started. Examples of tocolytics include magnesium sulfate, nifedipine, and indomethacin. Betamethasone, which is a glucocorticoid, is administered to the mom to decrease the chance of fetal respiratory distress syndrome after delivery. Penicillin is also started for group B streptococcus prophylaxis, and the patient should be transferred to a tertiary care center that can manage a preterm infant delivered before 34 weeks. Women in preterm labor between 34 and 36 and 6 sevenths weeks are managed less aggressively. Tocolytics and betamethasone are not administered because of the lack of benefit at this late gestational age. Intravenous fluids can be given to help decrease contractions, group B streptococcus prophylaxis is administered, and the patient is transferred to the appropriate caregivers. Tocolytics are minimally effective at delaying pregnancy during preterm labor, providing a maximum of 48 to 72 hours before delivery often occurs. However, this is sufficient time to administer betamethasone and transfer the patient to a tertiary care center. Thus, tocolytics are useful. Realize that there are contraindications to the use of tocolytics in some patients with preterm labor. Here is a summary of the management for patients in preterm labor. Note that the only purpose for antibiotics during preterm labor with intact membranes is group B streptococcus prophylaxis. 
Antibiotics do not prolong a pregnancy with intact membranes. The risk of preterm birth in the next pregnancy can be reduced for women with a high-risk pregnancy history. Progesterone, administered as an intramuscular injection or intravaginal suppository starting at 16 weeks of gestation, has been shown to significantly decrease the risk of recurrent preterm birth in these high-risk women. Unfortunately, once preterm labor has begun, there's not much that can be done to prevent preterm birth. Let's discuss preterm premature rupture of membranes, or PPROM. This is defined as rupture of membranes that occurs before the onset of labor in patients less than 37 weeks. It is a significant cause of preterm birth. We don't know why PPROM occurs, but it is likely due to an underlying inflammatory process of the fetal membranes and maternal uterine decidua. Major risk factors for the occurrence of PPROM are listed here. The problem with PPROM is that it increases morbidity for the mom and the fetus. Diagnosis of PPROM is performed by history, physical examination, and diagnostic studies. A significant finding during the speculum exam is a large pool of fluid in the vagina, which is virtually diagnostic of PPROM. Visualization of the cervix should be attempted to estimate cervical dilation. It is important to use a sterile speculum during the pelvic exam, and you should not perform a digital vaginal examination. A digital check of the cervix in the setting of PPROM will increase the chance of infection and earlier delivery of the preterm fetus. Initial diagnostic studies performed during evaluation for PPROM include pH and ferning of fluid collected from the vagina. Vaginal discharge normally has a pH of 3.5 to 4.5. In contrast, amniotic fluid is alkaline with a pH of about 7. Alkaline fluid will change pH paper to a deep blue. If vaginal fluid causes this change, it is suggestive of PPROM. However, blood, semen, and bacterial vaginosis are also alkaline and will change the color of pH paper. The next test performed on the vaginal fluid is ferning. The high salt content and estrogen present in amniotic fluid will lead to crystallization and an arborization pattern seen on microscopy when a sample of amniotic fluid is allowed to dry. This arborization pattern is called ferning and is demonstrated in the photograph on the right. If this pattern is seen on microscopy of fluid from the patient's vagina, it is very supportive of PPROM. If PPROM is diagnosed, management includes immediate transfer to a managing clinician. Generally, if the patient is not in labor and the fetus is stable, expectant management is indicated at less than 34 weeks of gestation. Delivery is indicated if the fetus is greater than or equal to 34 weeks. You should be familiar with the basics of PPROM management, which include betamethasone to decrease morbidity to the fetus, antibiotic prophylaxis for group B streptococcus and to prolong the pregnancy, and hospitalization for the remainder of the pregnancy. This concludes this presentation on preterm labor and preterm premature rupture of membranes.